who had power in Anglo-Saxon England. So Anglo-Saxon England was a very rich and powerful country. Between 1042 and 1066, its monarch, which means king or queen, was Edward the Confessor. To help him rule England, he had to gain the support of others. So he gained this by giving privileges to key earls and bishops. These men formed a council of advisers called the Witten. There was one family of earls, the Godwins, who became very powerful indeed. The Godwins controlled major earldoms. Once Edith Godwin married Edward in 1045, they were kin to the royal family and they proved their military worth by helping defeat the Welsh king. So let's look at who had power in Anglo-Saxon England. So without doubt, the most powerful person was Edward the Confessor, the king. So let's look at why he had power. So he was thought to be executing God's will on earth, which gave him lots of religious power. Every boy from the age of 12 swore an oath of loyalty to Edward. Edward was also the person who created and made all the laws in Anglo-Saxon England. Indeed, he had a reputation for being a very good lawmaker. The king also minted all the coins in Anglo-Saxon England. Edward also had a very thorough tax system that created a lot of wealth for himself. This included the Heriot tax. The Heriot tax was paid for by the Thanes and the Geld tax, which was a tax just to provide him with money. Edward had the power to give and take away land. He also had the power to raise a field, a field army, casual army. Edward couldn't rule the entire of England alone though. There was a king's council called the Witten. Now the Witten could choose the next king to come onto the throne. So this gave them some power. They also provided advice to the king on his foreign policy, religious affairs and land disputes. But the king could choose whether to take this advice or not. And the king could choose who was a member of the Witten and when the Witten was called to meet. So the Witten's power was compromised. Key bishops were members of the Witten and the Catholic Church did have power in Anglo-Saxon England. This was because um, the life expectancy in Anglo-Saxon England was short at around 30 years old. This meant that many people were very conscious of the afterlife and listened to the Catholic Church's advice on how to avoid hell and get to heaven. So this meant the Catholic Church influenced people's day-to-day decision-making. Also, the Catholic Church had a great deal of land. They owned one-sixth of English land. The bishops had an important status in charge of church districts, the most famous Anglo-Saxon bishop being Stigand, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Priests also had a key role in Anglo-Saxon society. They provided a more constant 
presence in the lives of peasants running Sunday services in villages. Also, the church provided clerks and record keepers to the king because they were one of the few people that could write at the time. Bishops were not the only members of the Witten. Earls were also members of the Witten, and earls had a key role and much power in Anglo-Saxon England because they were the king's right-hand men. Earls controlled major areas of land called earldoms, like Wessex, Northumbria and Mercia. As well as governing large areas of land, they collected taxes from their earldoms and were allowed to keep one third of these taxes, giving two thirds to the king. Now this made them very rich. In their earldoms, they also enforced law and order, providing judgments of innocence or Earls also organised the Fjord, the Anglo-Saxon army, for the king, making sure two general Fjord were available for every hundred. One family of earls had an especial amount of power under the rule of Edward the Confessor, and this was the Godwinsons. The Godwinsons had a large amount of land. Harold Godwinson was the Earl of Wessex. Tostig Godwinson was the Earl of Northumbria. Griff Godwinson was the Earl of Anglia. Leofwin Godwinson was the Earl of South West Midlands. They also had power through marriage. In 1045, Edward the Confessor had married Edith Godwin. She was the daughter of Godwin and the sister of Harold. This strengthened the Godwinson's position because it made them kin to Edward, although this was somewhat limited because there were no children produced from the marriage. In 1062, Harold and Tostig had also proved their military might and worth by defeating the Welsh king, Grufford at Llewellyn, and Harold also then married Grufford's widow. The Godwinsons also had power because they were all also members of the Witten and they influenced Edward to make bishops loyal to themselves members of the Witten too. Another set of people that had power in Anglo-Saxon England were the Shire Reeves. Think of sheriff when you hear that term, because these people were representatives of the king in each area of Anglo-Saxon England. They followed the king's instructions and communicated his orders. So they became the king's voice. They were responsible for rallying the Fjord to defend each shire and to maintain the fortifications of that shire and birth. The Shire Reeves also collected the Geld tax which was the land tax for the king. The Shire Reeve was also key in law and order and was involved in court, finding people innocent or guilty. So the Shire Reeve um, was very important in exerting the king's control without him physically having to be everywhere in England.
So you can see power in Anglo-Saxon England was very centrally held by the king. Indeed, the king had absolute power, but he couldn't be everywhere at once and he had to trust others to try to help him rule. But in trusting others, he did give them some privileges and power. He gave privileges and power to the Witten, which was made up of earls and bishops. One family in particular, the Godwinsons, had an especial amount of power. And Shire Reeves across the country were also in positions of power.